A pair of numbers is relatively prime if the two numbers do not have any factor in common. For example, if you had a number like 16, and if you had a number like 31, they are relatively prime because they don't have any factor in common. You can write 16 as 2 to the 4. 31 turns out to be a prime number, so there is nothing in common. On the other hand, 21 and, for example, 49, they do have a factor in common, so they're not relatively prime. For example, 21 is equal to 7 times 3, and 49 is equal to 7 times 7, so 7 is a common factor. Notice in each case, I've split up the numbers into products of prime numbers. So saying two numbers are relatively prime is the same as saying they do not have any prime number factors in common. Okay, so you just have to check their prime factors. And in this video, we're going to do a famous problem, which is what is the probability two numbers are relatively prime? What is the probability? If you pick two numbers at random, that they do not have any factor in common. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat that the answer is roughly 60.79%. And this is a crazily specific number. Why is it this number? Let's find out. So that's what we're going to do in this video, and we're going to do it in a sequence of very simple steps. Step one, what is the probability a number is divisible by a prime p? That's the first question. Well, the numbers that are divisible by p are basically, if p is a prime number, so I'm going to write it here, the numbers that are divisible by p are just going to be p, 2p, 3p, etc. Those are all the numbers divisible by p. Now the numbers not divisible by p are going to be numbers that are not on the list. Roughly, if you think about it intuitively, 1 over p numbers are going to be divisible by p. Because every p at step, p, 2p, 3p, you have a number divisible by p, but everything in between, there are p minus 1 numbers in between, they are not divisible by p. So the probability that a number is divisible by p is equal to 1 over p. So let's write that down. Okay, so if p is a prime, the probability that a number is divisible by p, so I'm going to write this as follows, probability a number is divisible by p, a number is divisible by p, is just going to equal to 1 over p, just like that. Okay, now why am I interested in this? Well, what I want to know is what is the probability that two numbers are relatively prime. So what I want to make sure is that for each prime number p, both of them aren't divisible by p. Because if both are divisible by p for even one prime number p, they're not going to be relatively prime. Okay, so what I'm interested in finding out is what is the probability that both of them are divisible by p, and then take 1 minus that probability. So for example, the probability a number is divisible by p is 1 over p. The probability a number is not divisible by p is 1 minus 1 over p. Now similarly, the probability, if you fix a prime number p, the two numbers, the probability that both of them are divisible by p is 1 over p times 1 over p. Right? You have to multiply the probabilities. So I'm going to write that down here. What is the probability that two numbers are divisible by p, both of them? That's what we don't want for it to be relatively prime. So probability that two numbers are both divisible by p. So let's write this down as are both divisible by p. The probability that two numbers are both divisible by p is equal to 1 over p times 1 over p, which is just 1 over p squared. Now, the probability, that's what we don't want. So we don't want this to happen for each prime p. So for every prime, for 2, we don't want them to be both divisible by 2. For 3, we don't want them to be both divisible by 3, etc. Then and only then will the two numbers be relatively prime, because they won't have any prime factor in common. So what we're interested in is a very interesting infinite product. And that's, that's the following. So the probability two numbers are both divisible by p is 1 over p squared. The probability this doesn't happen, that at least one of them, that either one is divisible by p, the other isn't, or neither is divisible by p, is 1 minus 1 over p squared. And the pr probability that the two numbers are relatively prime is going to equal to the infinite product, product p prime, of 1 minus 1 over p squared. That is going to be the probability that we want in our problem, the probability two numbers are relatively prime. Okay, probability two numbers are relatively prime is just going to equal to 1 minus 1 over p squared. Okay, product over all primes p. This is an infinite product. So how on earth are we going to calculate this? Is this easy or hard? 
this is really hard. So we're gonna solve this in a few minutes though. So that's gonna be super crazy. So let's see how we're gonna do this. Because unsolved for so many centuries, we're gonna do it in a few minutes. Of course, we have the benefit of knowing what the solution is. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to look at this product. I'm gonna look at one over this product. I'm gonna calculate that instead. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at one over that product. So let's look at one over product P prime of one minus one over P squared is just one, one over P squared is just P to the negative two. So one, one minus P to the negative two, that's go going to be what we're interested in, which we can write out as the product of P prime. Remember when you multiply fractions, you just multiply the numerators and denominators, of course, everything is one on the numerator. So just gonna take one over one minus P to the negative two. That's going to be the product we're interested in. Okay, this is going to be one over the answer we're interested in, then we can find out the answer we're interested in. Now let's figure out what this is, okay? So this is going to be what we're interested in. Now this is very cool, this is a very simple trick, but it's a very elegant trick, but it's not that easy to see. This is the sum of a geometric series. Remember that if you have a formula for a geometric series, if you write one plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus dot dot dot, this is a geometric series with ratio r, its sum is going to equal to one over one minus r, okay? And that's of course assuming that r is a number with absolute value less than one, okay? It's less than one, let's say, if it's a positive number. Now, once we have that formula, we're going to apply it here to expand this out, and it's gonna be so beautiful, okay? We're gonna get into the depths of number theory, a very fundamental fact about numbers. We're gonna write this out as the product p prime using the geometric series. What is the ratio going to be? The ratio is gonna be p to the negative two. So we can write this as product p prime. We can expand out each term as a geometric series. It's now going to be one plus one over p squared, which is p to the negative two. It's gonna be r plus one over p to the four plus one over p to the six plus dot, 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 et cetera. That's going to be the product we wanna calculate. And why have I written it out this way? Well, let's think about a general term in the product. A general term in the product, since this is done over all primes, I'm gonna write it out on this side of the board right now. So because this is a product over all primes, let's think about what this looks like. This looks like two is a prime, three is a prime, five is a prime, etc. So we're gonna be multiplying out all these terms. So we're gonna multiply one plus one over two squared plus one over two to the four plus one over two to the six, etc. Okay, plus dot 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 times one plus one over three squared plus one over three to the four plus dot 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 times one plus one over five squared plus one over five to the four plus dot dot dot. Now you must be thinking this is super complicated if you haven't seen it before, but what we can do is we can do a beautiful trick. Think about what a general term in this product is. We're gonna pick a number here in this first bracket, multiply with a number in the second bracket, then multiply with a number in the third bracket and so on, okay? And so what we're going to get is we're going to get all the perfect squares in the integers. Because if you think about it, any number is a product of powers of prime numbers. This is what is called the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. You can write it as a product of powers of prime numbers. Now what we are doing basically, if you pick a number, you look at what power of two is going to be in that number, what power of three is going to be in that number, what power of five is going to be in that number, etc. So what we're going to get is we're going to get the following. We're going to get some n varies from one to infinity of one over n squared. That's what we're going to get. And the reason we're going to get that is because if you think about the denominator, every single square, every single n squared is a product of powers of primes. And because it's a perfect square, the powers have to all be even powers. So we're allowed to pick one even power according to what power of two is involved in the denominator, what power of three is involved, what power of five is involved, it's a product over all primes. And, and conversely, any number, any such product, if we pick a product like this, it'll be a perfect square because all the exponents of the prime numbers will be even. And if we have a perfect square, we can just write it as a product of prime powers that are even exponents. So it's literally matching up with this sum. So that's going to be the answer to this infinite product. It's gonna be this sum. And now what's cool is we can find out the original probability that we want to find out that's going to be, and this is a beautiful answer, that's going to be one over this sum, right? And that's going to be, the sum actually turns out to be pi squared over six. So the eventual probability turns out to be six over pi squared, which is roughly 60.79 or rather 0 0.679.
So if you write it as a percentage, it's 60.79%. And if you want to see why that answer is what it is, why is this sum equal to pi squared by six? Check out this video, I've done it. Check it out in that video. I'm gonna see you there. It's a super beautiful calculation using basic trig. It's a very popular video on my channel. You're gonna love it. And I'm gonna see you in that video.